Hello everyone once again. Thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, now let me introduce myself. My name is Ivan. I am a pre-sales engineer here at Starwind. And today we'll describe the topic uh, of how we can manage the Windows failover clustering. Um, so we'll cover the most known tools and the functionality they provide. Just a short plan of what we are going to do. Uh, I will tell you about each of those tools and show you a short demo of how they work. And sure, after the webinar, we will have some time to answer on all of your questions. So I believe we can start then. Uh, now, that's not a secret that the main trick behind managing your virtualized environment is to spend a minimum time with a maxim maximum efficiency. When it comes to Hyper-V infrastructure, Microsoft provides a number of tools that helps system administrators to get the job done. Um, so let's say it's PowerShell and remote service administra administrator tools known as AirSAT, Windows Admin Center and System Center Virtual Machine Manager or simply SCVM app. And also we have some sort of third party services such as Five9 to manage your Hyper-V infrastructure. Fair to say, while the functionality of each of those tools is quite similar, one cannot be always replaced with another. Also, while most of the solutions come as a part of Windows Server operating system, others will need to get the credit card out of your wallet and pay for it. Uh, are they worth it? Uh, well, that is the, what we are going to find out in this webinar. We are going uh, to take a look at the functionality of those tools, to find out their pros and cons and understand when should uh, you use them, for example. So we'll start with the uh, native, let's say, uh, language currently for Windows and the Microsoft is the PowerShell. Since we are talking today about the management simplicity and efficiency, the main advantage of PowerShell is its potential to make almost all of your job fully automated. Create new VMs with a preset configuration, plan uh, for a failover cluster nodes maintenance, add new networking for a live migration, no big deal for a PowerShell at all. A few scripts and task scheduler is all what you need to make your work much easier. More to say, since PowerShell is .NET framework based, open sources since 2016 and cross-platform, you can easily use it with .NET based languages, also you can manage your Windows infrastructure even from Linux. And moreover, uh, moreover you, can use, uh, you can manage the Linux uh, using the PowerShell. Probably the last thing uh, to note is that PowerShell is integrated in all Windows OS versions, starts from Windows 7 and up to uh, Windows Server 2019. So you don't need to search for it. However, there is one bottleneck actually with the PowerShell. Its effectiveness and the level of the automatization you will achieve depend on your knowledge and skills. While one of the system administrator can be a PowerShell native speaker, the other one will have to spend a huge amount of time learning its language, structure and scripting principles. So, let me show you a brief, uh, briefly show you how you can manage, for example, a Hyper-V or a failover cluster uh, using the PowerShell. So let me just uh, log in inside the demo stand which I have prepared for you today. So it will be a simple two-node configuration. Uh, I'm not unwilling what actually runs the high availability in this case, but you might uh, you might understand it's probably Starwind, but it, it can be any possible uh, SAN, virtual SAN, or software, any, any other software-defined storage solutions, for example, such as Microsoft Storage Spaces. In any case, I would like to show how you can manage um, the cluster using the PowerShell. So the uh, there is a lot of uh, things which you can do using the PowerShell, and actually all of the possible things um, such as uh, migrating the nodes, migrating the roles, uh, migrating uh, disks, 
putting it to, into maintenance mode and etc cetera, etc cetera. it just uh, depends on your knowledge and also microsoft has a uh, very very well uh describing documentation on their website so you can easily find out uh all needed common leads uh, on the microsoft site combining them into your powershell script and use it for automatization some tasks for example load balancing or uh, move some roles uh, to the act to the passive node or something like this um to show you my script which i have prepared for you today guys it's not exact the failover cluster thing it's more about the hyper-v but i would like to show you the the power of the powershell that you can um, receive when you know how to write the scripts and how to optimize, uh, optimize some sort of things so as you probably know hyper-v doesn't have an integrated clone vm functionality but you can write it by your own as i did so this is the pr pretty simple script which is collecting information uh from the existing uh, uh, hyper-v vm it's not matter where it's located in cluster shared volume or inside the disk itself uh, and uh, after it after collecting the information it's just calculating needed uh, needed amount of ram and uh, cloning the virtual hard disk to a new folder as you can see here we just copy it to the possible folder uh to the clone folder and also we creating a new vm with uh, uh, already specified um parameters and then set the other parameters which is cannot be setting up during the creation of vm via powershell also as you can see we i have some un uh, comment uh, strings here so they're pretty much adding the uh, this vm to the cluster itself uh, let me show you what exactly I have. It's the just simple VM with uh, Alpine Linux installed inside. So I'm going to run this script and show you how it works. Oops, not this one. So as you can see, we're just collecting the information. Then we are copying the VHDX file to a new VM directory. And once it's cloned, it will create a VM and register it in hi inside the Hyper-V. I, I just also put some uh, timeouts just in order to if you will have a large uh, disks but still as you can see we have a clone VM just created by PowerShell so you don't need to manually click uh, next 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 and just clone the existing one just clone the existing VHDX file from the template template for example and make it uh, make the clone of this actually it can just modify the possible script add your needed things to it and it's even like still hyper-v doesn't have this option inside like from the box to achieve uh, what actually microsoft not cover it from the box so just if we'll click connect we will see that the alpine is just booting up and as per failover clusters things you can always manage uh, by simply for example we can get cluster we will see the cluster we can type the get cluster nodes or networking we will see how many nodes we do have in the cluster so it's just simple to know cluster and we will see the state of it so that's pretty much it for powershell let's move on and see what we have next so the next one is uh, the simple one uh, which is integrated within any installation of fellow cluster and also can be installed on your desktop uh, it's called a remote server administrating tools simply air uh, and so basically you can remotely join your service and manage all of that roles and features that run in windows server with remote service server administrator tools you can configure cluster where updating you can configure a group policy management and hyper-v management networking 
and of course the cluster itself. And of course, you have a server manager in order to edit some uh, settings of the server itself and uh, networking settings, for example, if you would like so. So you don't need to drive around to your data center and make it manually, uh, like on site, you can just simply do it from your desktop on the, at home or at office, and you don't need to um, to drive at the, at the location. The only thing, uh, I believe the only disadvantage of uh, such kind of tool is that it will require a lot of windows open it. And it probably not the best idea, uh, like not the best option today. But in, uh, if we take t talking about the uh, uh, possible options, it it's like an integrated option which will not require any money from you, of course. So let me just briefly show it to you. So. We just minimize the all PowerShell things. And here is the how uh, the follower cluster uh, manager uh, looks like. And you are pretty familiar with this, I believe so. So what we can do here, it's pretty much enough to get the job done. We can set up the new storage. We can take a look at the cluster events. Uh, we can set the networking, change the networking, change the live migration uh, properties and settings so create the pools and uh, configuring enclosures manage the disks uh, check the health status of the nodes as well as the health status of the cluster vms that's pretty much it it's the whole job like if the fellow cluster configure it properly there this tool will be more than enough uh, to manage the entire fellow cluster but you are not limited to combine your AirSat and PowerShell in order to um, like achieve a new level of administrator. I believe then we can uh, take a look in the other possible options. And the next one is actually uh, the like one of the latest products from Microsoft is the Windows Admin Center. So uh, Windows Admin Center is a web-based management tool allowing you to manage your Windows server. Uh, starts from 2008 or two, and for example, 2019, it's already added the support of this, uh, the, of the latest Windows. So Windows Admin Center Gateway is basically all you need to knock to your server, server remotely. When it comes to a follower cluster, you can manage individual follower cluster nodes as individual servers, or you can also add them as the follower cluster to view and manage cluster resources, storage, networking, nodes, roles, virtual machines, and virtual switches. Now, the most interesting thing is that it allows you to manage a hyper-converged infrastructure running Windows 2016. So it means that, for example, if you're going to configure uh, Story Spaces Direct, you can manage it from uh, the Windows Admin Center. Moreover, I would say that um, actually the Windows Admin Center is based on fully based on the PowerShell. So you, uh, I believe so. Microsoft saying that they are going to add some plugins, and you also can combine PowerShell skill, your PowerShell skills with the um, simplicity of the Windows Admin Center in order to, once again, achieve a new level of administrator. Um, also, you can even configure a software-defined networking and can simulate the failure of the cluster once it's uh, up and running, and uh, all other things such as checking the performance metrics uh, just from a convenient web, web interface. Also, I would like to say that the Windows Admin Center is licensed that already included in the license of Windows Server, so it's completely free of charge, and you can uh, just simply download it from the Evaluation Center of Microsoft and run it under your, like in your environment. And uh, always this nice and convenient interface with useful dashboards. The only real problem is that in you product from Microsoft and it needs some further development and, 
as sometimes it might get slow and unstable. So actually, I will I was surprised when I like preparing for this webinar. I was surprised that only a, only one um, web browser was tested and approved as the supported web browser for this for Windows Administrator Center. It's just a Google Chrome. They they don't even saying that Edge or Internet Explorer is supported for this. But uh, let's take a look at this one. So just give me a sec. And uh, this is the Windows Admin Center. It can be installed uh, on your server itself. It can be installed on your desktop, where, uh, desktop um, PC, and you can manage all of the infrastructure from this. So as I said previously, you can manage individual servers, such as just clicking and adding them to uh, the Windows Admin Center, so you can check the uh, real-time performance metrics, you can check uh, how many uh, CPUs utilization and your, of course, your uh, disk utilization, ROM utilization, and etc. etc. Also, you can configure all of the things can be configured here, such as firewall, uh, local users, administrators, even you can uh, open the PowerShell uh, remote connection. And uh, for example, kill some problems like this. Is there just a separated host management? But let's uh, let's back to the failover cluster. Unfortunately, the failover cluster manage management options is pretty much, uh, I would say, it's cut it, maybe something like this, because we don't have an option, for example, to move the cluster disks between the nodes. We don't have an option to uh, perform a live migration. The only thing which we can do here is just watch and monitor what we actually have here and how it's configured. So just a monitoring tool for, for Windows failover clustering. I believe so. Uh, Microsoft going to add a fully functional plugin to manage the failover cluster, but uh, we will see in the future. Let's move on. And the next, uh, the next possible option will be and the uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Um, so you can already guess by the name uh, is intended to manage right the Hyper-V VMs. Uh, so what the functionality gives us first, it's adds provision and manage Hyper-V and VMware virtualization hosts and clusters. Next create and manage virtual machine networking and network gateways. Finally, we can discover, classify, provision, allocate, and assign local and remote storage. So far, so good, right? Now, all of this functionality, actually the same that the other tools give us, completely not free of charge. There is a two possible edition for a system center virtual machine manager as the standard one and the data center. Well. That's up to you to decide which one uh, will work for you better. And uh, let's take a look at this one. I will spend some time on describing what uh, what the uh, system center can give us. And um, here is the GUI. So as I said previously, you can manage all of your infrastructure here, uh, not only a failover cluster and opening a lot of windows and et cetera, et cetera. You can also manage your shared storage, for example, using SMIS provider and SMIS protocol to provision the storage for your VMs, to provision the storage for a failover cluster. You can also manage the VMs, of course, obviously. And uh, here's a lot of the things which is hiding from a first look, but uh, the more you work with uh, the SCVMM, the work you love it, obviously. But it it like costs pretty much, but still for managing, let's say, uh, 20, 30, 50 physical servers within your far farm, uh, it will be a better best choice, I believe so. 
uh, because there is a lot of possibilities such as Azure integration, uh, the storage management remotely, you don't need to have a lot of windows open it, and you can manage all of the things related to the vSAN, related to the physical SAN, host, VMs, just from a single pane of glass. Uh, so what we currently have here is just a two node configuration and just a web cluster. So we can uh, even, the SCVMM has an integrated uh, VMI calls, which is hiding from you, but uh, we can even uh, start the task, which will optimize the host utilization. Uh, so it will perform a live migration between the host if needed. If uh, you think that some of the host utilizing more than need, uh, you can validate the cluster, you can upgrade the cluster remotely. So it's just same cluster we're updating, but used, uh, but you're just running it from from the SCVMM. And you can manage all of the VMs separately. Uh, so this will show you not only a cluster at VMs, but also the local VMs. And uh, there's a lot of things, and I, I like recommend to at least uh, request a evaluation version of the SCVMM and try it uh, at your own in Hyper-V infrastructure because it's the real cool things. And uh, it's the paid where it's the paid uh, management option. So let me uh, proceed with the uh, one more paid. Uh, option which currently available is the 5.9 manager uh wrong but i think there's the majority of attendees have used or at least heard of the 5.9 manager the tool is really handy uh, when it comes to monitoring and managing hyper-v server and with it a fellow cluster as well so what exactly 5.9 give us well we automatically discover host servers and define which one make up the follower cluster, create, validate clusters, and assign access points, um, and of course, live migrate the VMs if needed. That's the point of follower cluster, isn't it? Also, the 5.9 manager allow, allows configuring your cluster nodes, be virtual disk or networking settings. It even gives you an ability to run a series of advanced Hyper-V tests on, on each of the hosts and scale out for all servers. The result uh, provides a recommendation to enhance your node stability and performance. To top of that, 5.9 Manager provides a monitor dashboard to, uh, to provide the current and historical data about the usage of your clusters, hosts, and VMs. So, but the only the only single cons I believe so it's not a free of charge at all. So let's take a look at this one as well. Just give me a second. So this is how the five nine manager looks like, and uh, as I said previously, there's having the dashboards here. We can see uh the recent events we can see uh the health status of the nodes and the vms it, it also shows not only the cluster at vms but also a local one um we can define it by the color of the vm itself uh so we're just adding the cluster and the 5.9 manager uh, just understand that it's the clustered host uh, and add it as well. So we can manage all of the Hyper-V things or the failover cluster things within the same uh, convenient actually uh, GUI as the SCVMM give us the option. And uh, here's the optimizer, for example. So uh, we can optimize the, um, the host by, uh, by seeing the utilizing of current uh, production hosts. So uh, as per monitoring, uh, we can check uh, the IOPS, we can check uh, the networking throughput, bandwidth, and all other things, uh, also the CPU percentage. So as you can see here, it's also included in the uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, uh, but uh, the 5.9 not not bad, uh, bad. I would also recommend to at least uh, request a trial uh, license from the 5.9 site 
uh, website web page and uh, try it within your infrastructure possibly you will like it and decide to go with this product because once again you're just combining everything within a, a single pane of glass and manage all of the things here so you don't need to open a lot of uh, windows to manage your high preview uh, filler cluster and also gentlemen and ladies uh, i would like to show you the um the exclusive let's say like this product which is not yet available but we are working on releasing an our own a starwin stack uh management option for hyper-v clusters so now that we are done the most known tools for lower cluster i want to take this chance to raise the certain of our new upcoming Starwind solution. It's not released yet, so I'm not going to show all of the functionality and features. This will rather be a quick glance at what should you expect from it. So the main idea behind this project is to provide you with uh, a single web-based management for all of your infrastructure, including fellow cluster. Setting up and live migrating the VMs, configuring failover cluster nodes, rebooting and updating them. This all will be done as a single tool. So while lots of the sysadmins may adopt uh, the convenience of management consoles of uh, the previous tools, we spend the hack amount of time fine tuning the look of our GUI. Actually, it is not about the management only. It also has the monitoring functionality for your system. Actually, you can use the dashboard for any required components, VM's health, performance, CPU utilization, net network state and latency, nodes resources, and etc. The drawbacks, well, I guess it will be available to try for you and then you can share some feedback with us. So currently it's just not released yet, but uh, I believe in next year you will be you will be you will have an option to test it. Just give me a second, I'm going to show it for you. So that's how it looks like. It is the uh, web-based, as, as I say, it is well web-based uh, management console for all of your Hyper-V and uh, failover cluster things. Let me just uh, log in. And here's the GUI uh, uh, that we currently have and no worries, it's under construction, it's still under the development stage, but it's already shown some uh, metrics from the cluster, such as memory utilization, CPU, we can check the VM state, uh, the node state, we can even uh, manage the VMs, for example, we can move, migrate the VM and using uh, for example, the live migration, we're selecting the first nodes, it's currently located on the second host, as you can see. So we're just specifying the first node, and after it, it will perform a task under the recent task, and we can see uh, the progress here, and also when it started. So also, uh, you will get an option set up the storage you will have an option to set up a networking of course um, but currently all of the other things such as practice support backup and other things is under development stage still uh, so this is the the main dashboard so you can always check the uh, the task and events on the bottom you can check the current utilization and what currently running uh, and the vm state for example in node state so that's pretty much it, gentlemen. Uh, I believe so. Now we can uh, switch to the question time, and I would be happy to answer on all of your possible questions. Feel free to ask any questions in the question box.
Uh, I'm not going to say uh, thanks for question, Steve. I'm not going to say if, uh, that it is will cost something or will be for free for a community uh, because there is no uh, yet. It's not yet released. So just stay tuned on our website. You will see the announcement. You will you will see uh, it will be for free or not. Uh, also, uh, thank you for question, Jamie. Uh, no exact uh, release date yet, so uh, it's probably will be on. It's definitely will be on next year, but uh, I'm not going to say in which months actually. Uh, yeah, thank you for question, Alan. Uh, yes, it, this will be available to review on our website in short time. Thank you for your question, Renew Air. Uh, I'm not sure that I pronounce your name correctly, but uh, yes, our our management software will be able to manage the VSN as well. So the our star went with sun as well. Thank you for your question, Steve. Uh, yes, like currently it's, uh, I'm not going to say it will be available from start, but uh, yeah, we are going to implement the support for Veeam here. Thank you for your question, Alan Sindler, Sindless. Uh, I believe so. Uh, you are not limited to contact your sales representative here at Starwind and ask to a live demo for a product. And uh, yeah, we also will be more than happy to uh, show you the, our latest products and how it works. Alan Seidlers also asks us about the uh, fiber storage. Uh, not, I'm not going to say no, but not in the first release at all. So uh, it will be strictly uh, development for a Star Wind as well as the Hyper V. So um, no fiber channel here, just ISCASI. Thank you for your feedback, Tobias. So yeah, actually, yeah, we have spent a, a long, uh, a long time to create this uh, nice-looking GUI, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the testing of the software uh, next year. Have to fix. Uh, also, Dave Guo asked us about how to fix a fail to bring the resource online error. I'm not sure what what uh, what you're asking for. I believe you're asking about the role inside the failover cluster, and this question is uh, it's quite wide, and it just depends from the particular error which you re uh, received. Okay, gentlemen, I believe uh, there is no questions left as far as I can see. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the webinar. So you will, uh, it will be possible for you to uh, review this webinar uh, in the short time on our web, uh, website. So stay tuned and also stay tuned for our new product. I hope it, uh, it will be interesting for you as well. Thanks once again and hope to meet you in the next webinar. Cheers.